Hi, I've got a bunch of components sitting in front of me on the desk. We all know what that means, don't we? It's experimentation time. <laughs> Stinks like a dead fart in here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. The Astro 30 here with a cup of coffee. Always good to have a cup of coffee first thing in the morning. Nice. Now on to the topic of today's video. When I was younger, around about the age of 11 or 12, I can't remember now offhand, it may have even been 10, I got given one of these Science Fair 160 in 1 electronic project kits. My brother had it first, and it was made by the Tandy Corporation and sold by Radio Shack in America and Tandy in Australia. And it was basically like a breadboard design with spring terminals where you connect your wires to, and the components were wired to the spring terminals underneath, and it even featured a basic seven segment display. However, that's not uh, the topic of interest today. My focus today is on the little integrated circuit, which is a very obscure integrated circuit that was supplied on the board. A lot of the other in-one kits supplied op-amps, and I even think one of them even had a digital gate IC on it. Can't remember offhand, it's been a long time since I've seen these things. Anyhow, only about six projects used this particular IC. It's a BA306 or an NT. E1431, which as I said was only used in about six projects out of the whole entire book. And I probably only built about one fifth of the projects that were in the book. I only built the stuff that interested me. But they should have used this IC in a lot more of the projects as far as I'm concerned. It's a general purpose amplifier and according to the data sheet, which is very sparse, it's known as an audio driver. I have actually built this out of MPN transistors before, back when I was like 13 or 14. And I know it does work outside the IC with discrete components, uh, but I never actually tested to see how well. I also don't know how much gain it does produce, even with this uh, boost capacitor there. This other ceramic uh, 22 nanofarad capacitor here is just for high frequency stabilization. And here is the redrawn equivalent schematic now, it's a 7-pin SIP, or single inline package. Pin 5 has no connection according to the data sheet. The guy that wrote the article on this website, I'll post the, the link to the website in the description, um, says it goes between the collector of Q1 and the base of Q2. So, what purpose that serves, I don't know. And so, uh, pin 2, or connection 93 on the board, is used for feedback and it usually goes between 93 and 92 or pin 2 and pin 1 and you put a small capacitor here um, one of the circuits used a 10 nanofarad um, ceramic capacitor across there or was it 100 nanofarad 100 nanofarad I beg your pardon so I can test the circuit when I build this up on breadboard with and without that capacitor see if it makes a difference to the gain of the amplifier this is not an op amp there were and there are better alternatives even back then even the LM741 would be a good example to this this is of an obscure IC and I'm not sure what devices in the uh, electronics world consumer market it was ever used in I've never actually ever come across this IC other than this 161 project kit so but that's enough of me talking about the thing. Let's uh, actually build the thing and test it out. Okay, so I've got a bunch of parts laid out here on the desk to actually build that little IC. I've got some BC546s. Um, they're the most common MPN transistor you can use. I'm pretty sure back in the day when I built it the first time out of the discrete components, I was using a BC547 from memory. Parts I pulled off of an old black and white Philips television. Anyway, uh, I've got a bunch of resistors that we need. I've got a small little 57 millimeter 8 ohm half watt speaker. I've got the wrong transformer. That is the correct transformer. The other one I had was a 3K to 3K. 
this one is a 1k to 8 ohm. I can verify that, but I just picked out the wrong transformer at the back. Anyway, the 3.3 uh, microfarad capacitor, 100 nanofarad capacitor, MKT style, that's just for an input capacitor when I test the circuit. 100 nanofarad um, ceramic and a 22 nanofarad ceramic, respectively. So I've got all the parts. I'm more interested to see this little speaker outside the cute little box it comes in. And yes, they put it in a cardboard thing. Okay. Oh, snazzy. Getting that back in there is going to be a pain in my ass. But I don't know whether I should solder some fly leads to this to make it easier, or I'm just going to connect some uh, jumper cables. I don't know if I can even get jumper cables on there. I mean, I'll give it a try. I don't know how wanky this is going to be. Well, yeah, no, that'll work fine. So The only thing is, I forgot to buy a 9 volt battery, a new one, so I'm going to have to use this um, nearly depleted 9 volt one that I've been had sitting around for a couple of weeks. This was used in an, another project that I haven't uploaded yet, but we'll get around to uploading it later. However, as it stands, when you put a light on it, you're probably going to be down to 8.5 volts, so it shouldn't really skew my test results or cause a problem for performance of this little amplifier circuit. I don't see it drawing any more than about 100 milliamps anyway, so it shouldn't really put that much of a load on this battery. So anyway, let's stop talking about it and let me breadboard up the circuit uh, on some breadboard and uh, we'll get going on this thing. Okay, already there is uh, conflicting information on the correct pinout of a BC546. I was under the impression that the BC546 or the BC range in general, unless it was marked with a C, I believe, I could be wrong, from left to right it went emitter base collector. There's only one that says emitter base collector, and that's this one. Not that we can see once that goes away, but yeah, it's saying that pin one is the emitter, pin three is the collector, yet then there's contradictory information everywhere else saying the opposite. I've always used them with the emitter on the left. I know the 2N3904 is this way around pinout wise, so. Yeah, it's conflicting information here. The internet's not that great. And I don't really have a circuit test or an or a meter to actually measure which pins are what. I mean, measuring it with a multimeter is not going to tell you much. You'll find both a junction at the collector and base and emitter and base. But it doesn't tell you which one's which. So anyway, it's going to have to be just trial and error. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then the connections are the wrong way around. So... I'm just going to place my transistors in the breadboard. Uh, this breadboard is really designed more for Arduino. The pin spacings are quite... Well, not the pin spacings, but I mean the uh, pitch of the holes is a lot bigger than you would think. That's what she said. I'm going to put that one there. Alright, let me just uh, get this built up. I'm going to assume it's emitter base collector. Alright, the thing's built now. I haven't actually tested to see if it works. I'm going to do that on camera and probably look like an idiot if it doesn't. But that's how we all learn. So I'll just connect my battery and see what this thing does. The speaker is connected to the transformer. Well, currently, absolutely nothing. Oh, that's annoying. I have got it to work. It's this socket board. It's very, very touchy. Transformer's not making good contact. Anyway.
pain in the ass. I believe the transistors are connected in right. No, they're not. Whoa, okay. So, judging by turning those transistors around, it is definitely collector base emitter, which contradicts everything. I really need to get hold of a um, proper transistor tester so it can tell me which one's the emitter, which one's the base. However, now I've got a little bit more output. It's pretty, it's pretty loud. This socket board's a pain in the ass. Every time you move, it keeps jiggering the bloody connections around. It's annoying. All right, I'm getting sick of listening to that through the speaker. So I'll just disconnect the speaker. Right, now I'm gonna throw it on an oscilloscope. Kind of terrible. Yeah, well, doesn't look that bad, but it's not putting out much in the wattage department. It's only putting out 0 0.09 volt peak to peak. So, yeah, but every time I touch the circuit, it changes. This socket board is next to useless. Every time you touch a component, it comes loud, it comes soft. Frickin' annoying. Well, it is working. Doesn't look that great on the oscilloscope screen though. Okay, 10 microfarad capacitor makes it sound less tinny on the input there. But still distorted. Just as a side note, and I've already figured it out anyway, uh, through manual testing. Well, the easiest way is to figure out where the emitter is on a transistor. So I've pulled the first transistor out of its original home and stuck it at the back of the breadboard there. I've got my meter set to diode test, and I will just put my positive on the base, which is an MPN transistor. Right, 0 0.662, 0 0.665. Now, the pin that's got the highest voltage drop on it is the emitter. So, this one on the right would be the emitter. So most of those pinout diagrams that I found online would be correct. It's not much of a difference. It's only like about three millivolt difference in it, but there is a difference. So that right hand pin is definitely emitter. So why is this important? Well, in low voltage applications like this, it really doesn't matter if you end up getting a transistor around the wrong way. But in higher 
voltage application such as a power amplifier, get one of those transistors backwards and the magic smoke may escape. So that's why it's important to verify the transistor's pins out before you install it in the circuit. So now I know that these three MPN transistors are basically for all intents and purposes the pin out is backwards. I suppose for a 40 year old circuit it still works. Uh, just not very well on breadboard. There's a lot of distortion issues there. I could build it up on a piece of uh, VeraBoard just to verify, but I don't really want to waste this output transformer because they're like six bucks, which is quite expensive, and they didn't have very many of them there. So, one of those things. These transistors are annoying me because I always remember that the Fairchild BC range was always emitter on the left not collector. Apparently now it is collector on the left. What I need is one of those little plug-in little LCR meters that I had once before, you know where you plug a transistor in it can tell you what pins what. I need another one of them. Don't have one or access to one. But considering when I reverse the transistors around it sounds distorted as f Oh, farted. Um, yeah, it tells me that the pinouts are wrong. It's the other way around. Anyhow, I just thought I'd reinvestigate this uh, little IC that was on the project kit. As I said, I have built it once before, but with better results than that. So, yeah, this uh, socket board is not the greatest. I had so many issues trying to get that transformer to actually make a connection in the first place. And there's my little test circuit that I've connected up. Um, these were the ones that were actually on the Project Kits board already. Um, and that one. Well that one wasn't, that one was, that one was. That's added and that's added afterwards. But uh, yeah, that's, that's how... It, it does look like an op-amp symbol but it's not really an op-amp. But yeah, that's basically how you can configure it. There's my redrawn schematic so I could actually uh, wire it up. So yeah, it does work. It's just not very the greatest thing in the world. Oh. But um, yeah, that's what you get. I mean, it could be the wrong transistors. They may have been two SC transistors for all intents and purposes. In fact, I don't even know what I used back in the day when I rebuilt it. Anyway, I'm the Astro 30, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe below. And you can always follow me on Facebook, and you can become a Patreon member for as little as a dollar a month. Hit those links in the description, guys. Anyway, this is the Astro 30 saying, see ya. I hope to do another test experiment like this again later. Bye for now.